Hello everyone, welcome back to Paper pa Paperbacks and Ponytails. I'm Katie, and today we are going to talk about the top 10 books that I read this year. So I have my lovely cup of pomegranate tea, same tea you saw on Wednesday because I'm filming both videos this week at the same time. So I'm excited to talk about my top 10 favorite books. If you missed my worst books of 2021, that one took place on Wednesday, and I will leave that link down in the, in the description box below as I don't know how to put it at the top yet. So go check that out. Okay, so I'm excited. I'm going to start from book number 10. We're going to work our way up to my favorite book of the year. Okay, so number 10 is over here. <laughs> I didn't put it in my pile because I own these ones. Okay, so the first ones I want to talk about is actually a trilogy. I'm counting it all for number 10, but it is the journey to journey, journey, ugh. let's talk correctly, <laughs> journey to Juna, um, by Kim V. Engelman, and, um, this is one of my fav, well, actually probably the most favorite middle grade series ever, um, this was a reread for me this year, it will always be a favorite of mine, so it's number 10 on the list this year only because it's a reread, I didn't want to put it, like, number one, two, or three, because I tend to put, like, new, new, newer books to me at the top. So, yeah, these are excellent books. If you're fans of Chronicles of Narnia, these are great, great reads for middle grade age, and I absolutely love them, but it's about this beautiful, gorgeous, large swan named Laurel who comes to visit these children who need, who they kind of need his help as well. But he comes asking them to help his swans in his kingdom because the evil swan, Sebastian, is trying to take them away from his kingdom. So it's really good. They travel to Juna and help these poor swans that need their help in coming back to Laurel and this beautiful kingdom. So they're, they're all really good. I honestly wish there was more books in this series. It is hard to find. Um, you might be able to find it on eBay. I think the first book is on Amazon, so check that out if you want to. But yeah, so this is book number 10. Highly recommend. It's on my favorite middle grades video as well. Definitely love it. All right, number nine is actually a Christmas book, which I was surprised I had on my top 10 for the year. So a Christmas book for my top 10 is The Christmas Joyride by Melody Carlson. And I talked about, I think I talked about this book in a previous video, how I was going to read this, but I absolutely love this book. I will talk more about it in my wrap up for this month, but I absolutely adored it. It's about this woman in her 80s who is planning on retiring from Chicago to Phoenix, and she is taking her decked out RV across uh, Route 66, I believe, and she's going to take it and visit people who entered into her kind of Christmas contest that she had on her blog. Well, her her neighbor won't let her go alone. Like, you can't travel all that way by yourself. So she decides to go with her and help visit all these people who won the contest who need a little Christmas cheer on the way. So it's fun. It's cute. Five stars. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely. 100%. Loved it. If you want a short Christmas read, this is it. Okay. Next book that I have for you all is a duology for number eight. So we're counting two books in number eight. So technically I probably have like 15 books, but I'm, I'm putting series together in one thing since they were both about the same rating, which are Wolf by Wolf and Blood for Blood. I'm trying to figure out which way to hold them. Probably this way. <laughs> so Wolf by Wolf and Blood for Blood, which I actually got this recommendation from, uh oh, Haley, Haley in Bookland. That's who it was. <laughs> I couldn't remember for a second. But these are one of her favorite books of, I believe, last year, and I finally got into them, and I absolutely love them. I love that they're not super popular, and I'm like, why aren't they? They're really, really good. I gave both of them five stars. I listened to this one on audiobook, the first book I actually read because they didn't have the audio for it, but I wish they did, because the audio was really good as well. So, I'm going to talk about this first book, because this is a little spoiler if I talk about the second book, Blood for Blood. But Wolf by Wolf is about a 
girl who is Jewish and she was in a concentration camp during World War II. And she is unfortunately um, experimented on, which in, now enables her to um, shapeshift into anybody she wants. She can change her hair color, her eye color, um, her shape, her body, anything into somebody else. And so she ends up figuring out a way to escape the concentration camp. And later on, as she's growing up, she finds the, um, the resistance and she ends up impersonating a girl in a motorcycle race. And the victor at the end gets to go to a party where Hitler is. So it's all about her, her journey through World War II and this one is as well. So there's a lot more going on behind this story and it's, they're so good. I love these. Absolutely love these. Um, so I would say these honestly are like um, a mixture of kind of X-Men, but not too much. So if you're not too sci-fi, don't worry about it. It is more historical fiction, but if you like kind of like a mixture of X-Men and kind of like historical fiction, World War II, then these are for you. They're really good. All right, next up is, what is next? Number seven, and another, another historical fiction. So this one is The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel. And this was a little bit slow to start off with, but by the end, by the end, I was honestly surprised I wasn't crying in the car. I listened, or no, I actually read this in the car. I usually can't because I get sick in the car when I read, but I had to finish it on a road trip that we were on. And I was like, I have to finish. I have to finish. And I'm surprised I didn't cry. Although if I did cry, my parents would have been like, what's wrong? <laughs> what's going on? But I gave this one four and a half stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, really enjoyed it. The ending was so beautiful. I really loved it. But it's about this girl who I believe she is Jewish, I believe. But um, she escapes with her mother. And they escape to Paris. And her father is arrested. And her mother, oh, her mother. Ooh, her mother. Just wanted to throw somebody across the room. Yeah, that's her mother. Um, wow, her mother is quite quite the card in this book. Um, so her father ends up being arrested, and she I can't think of her name. I'm not good with names. If you didn't know that, Ava. So Ava, um, she sees her father through the peephole in another apartment across the hall. She sees her father getting arrested and doesn't do anything about it. And, but her father told her, if anything happens, take your mother and just go. And so she does go and her mother is like mad at her throughout pretty much almost the entire book. And, but it's all about her journey and how she gets involved with the resistance and she ends up helping them to create um, papers and passports for children trying to get out of get out of the area and so she was like I don't want these children losing their names there's a helicopter passing by as I speak so anyways <laughs> um but yeah she finds a blank book and, and actually it's probably not blank no it's not blank but she finds a book in the church that she's working in and she decides to create a code with another man who's in the resistance and they create this code where they are able to put the real children's names in this book without people finding out about it. So they, so the children can keep their names, even though they have to have new names to escape. So really, really good. If you like historical fiction, this is good. I have one of her other books that I got a little free library and I, I'm, I need to read it. I need to read it. It was good. Okay. Next up is book number six, which I should have over here. misplacing books all the time. Okay, I'm just going to talk about this one because I can't find it right now. But Cinder is book number six. So I gave this one five stars. I listened to it on audio because it was very long. <laughs> I do better with long books when it's on audio. So I listened to it on audio and um, it was my first time ever reading the first book in the Lunar Chronicles and I really enjoyed it. The narrator did such an excellent job with the characters so it's all about this girl who is i believe she's part cyborg and it's all about how like the lunar people are kind of trying to infiltrate 
down here on Earth and um, how the prince, I guess, met Cinder. And yeah, it's it's really enjoyable. It's definitely, it's a sci-fi retelling of Cinderella. I'm excited to read the rest of the series. I probably should have read them like back to back because I did enjoy it quite a lot. I made it on the list, but I haven't gotten to the second book yet. I'm going to try to get to some of it on Friday. No, today. Yeah, today. <laughs> today I'm going to try to get to some of it on audio. So yeah, that was a really good sci-fi retelling. I did enjoy it. I'm way behind everybody else because everybody else has read it, or most everybody has read it. But it was really good and really enjoyable. Okay, so let's see. Book number five is, if I can find it, there it is. Book number five on my favorites list is Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. And this is a bad copy from the library that I borrowed. They probably need a new copy, which is sad. But, um... Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. I did a buddy read of this with um, with Books and Jam and The Curly Reader on YouTube. And they are such wonderful ladies. I'm so happy that I got to meet and know them and continue getting to know them. They're wonderful ladies. And so we read this together. I think we all gave this book five stars. It was really good. Um, definitely a part of history that I don't think I knew quite a I didn't really know anything about but it's about Isabel where she is has decided to tell her life story to a she's not really a reporter I think she's like in college or something but she decides to tell her story she's never told her story and until until this day and she's like I want to tell it now so she decides to tell this girl about her about her secrets of a charmed life and how um, 1940s England, when England starts to get bombed during World War II, and it talks about how, um, a lot of the children became foster children and were sent to the countryside for protection. Well, she doesn't want to go. Um, she wants to stay in, in London and she wants to design dresses. That's what she wants to do, but she, her mom tells her, you have to go with your sister and protect her. So they do go. They do end up going and um, she tries to find her way back to London. It's it's a really good story. It's definitely definitely got a lot of layers in this story and quite a few surprises in the end and Susan Meisner does a great job of wrapping up every little detail. Like there's like little snippets here and there throughout the story like who's this person? Who could this be walking into this room? And like by the end, she wraps up everything really nicely, and it was a really good book. This is actually my first Susan Meisner book, and I'm excited to try more of her. So, yes, that was really good. Okay, let's see the next book, which I forgot to grab, but my dad might have taken it with him to work today because he's reading it now. But um, so, book number four is *A Night Divided* by Jennifer Jennifer A. Nielsen, and. This was my first Jennifer Nielsen book that I've ever read. Will not be the last. I listened to this on audio and it was so good. Another part of history that I knew nothing about and it was just so good. I loved it. I gave it five stars. So I actually read quite a bit of historical fiction this year and I was not mad about that. I enjoyed a lot of it. So this one is about when the Berlin Wall goes up after World War II. And when it does, um, this girl's father and one of her brothers um, take a trip for business um, into East Berlin or West Berlin? West Berlin. But the wall goes up in the middle of the night and they are not able to return. So they are separated for years because of this wall. And so it's all about how the father and brother reconnect across the wall and spot their sister and trying to tell them, you know, we can help you. And they're going to try to find a way to get back together over on, over on the father's side of the wall. So it's really good. It's really, really good. It's middle grade, but it does read a little bit higher middle grade because of the content of it. But it's very, very good. I highly recommend it. Okay. And then the next book 
Number three. We are down to the top three of the year. I'm so excited. Number three is another middle grade. I actually had a few middle grades on this list. Quite a few. Okay, so this one is Close to Famous by Joanne Bauer. And I never would have read this book if I didn't have to read a book for a challenge with food on the cover. This was so good. <laughs> I love this book so much. I gave it five stars. If I could give it more, I probably would. So, so good. And this cover, like, I do not like this cover at all, honestly. But the story in here is so good. Oh, it was so good. So I'm definitely probably going to, like, binge read all of her books next year. I'm probably have to make a video about that because this was very, very good. I gave this one five stars. So this is about a girl who, she has dyslexia and, um... So she has a hard time reading, a hard time understanding in school, but she absolutely loves to bake. She loves cupcakes. She loves to bake. Even though she can't read, she watches people on TV and stuff and recreates the recipes. All right. So um, her and her mother end up trying to, I guess, get away from kind of an ex-boyfriend of her mother's. And so they end up escaping to a different town. And there um, she meets a cranky old woman who used to live in Hollywood. And I guess this is about their, their friendship kind of and how um, they help each other learn and grow. Um, this woman can't cook. She can't read. So they kind of teach each other. And just every single character in the town had a really good personality and had a story to tell. And... That's why I love this book and just like the love that everyone got from eating her cupcakes like instantly falling in love with this character just like I did kind of made me want to bake cupcakes <laughs> gotta be honest I'm baking cookies this week so close enough okay so yeah this is book number three absolutely loved it don't let the cover fool you it's good and then um, number two on my list was actually a reread for me but I hadn't read this book in probably over 10 or 15 years. And it is Steve and Me by Terry Irwin. And I'm not a fan of autobiographies, never have been. But this one, oh, this one. This one is like five stars. It gives me all the feelings, like literally, if a book has ever given you all the feels this is it like literally I cried I was happy I probably laughed <laughs> I was angry like everything in this book is just so incredible like I was a huge fan of his growing up absolutely loved him and like just his life stories and everything and the ending like in the back it says like she had like over 900 pages of stories and I'm like Where's the other 700 pages? Like, I want those stories. Like, I'm honestly tempted to write Terry Irwin and say, could I please have the other 700 pages if you have it on computer? Because I really want to read the stories. Because this book was just so good. I loved reading about his life with Terry and their children. And it was just, it was tender and heartbreaking and lovely and wonderful. And if you like, if you hate biographies and you, you you know you want to read one for a challenge or you just want to try something new I highly recommend Steve and Me by Terry Irwin it is so wonderful I love it so much so number two probably would have been number one if I'm being honest but the next book is my favorite so it probably would have been a tie between this one and number one all right so hi Katie here popping in for a quick second to talk about a new favorite book of the year. I literally just finished it yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And so I had to pop in and tell you about The Ice Swan by Janelle Szezelski. Really hard to pronounce, but I absolutely love this book. It was five stars. It could be my favorite book of the year, but I think I'm going to put it um, right before this next book coming up. So very, very good. I highly, highly recommend it. Hold on, my arm's hurting. There we go. <laughs> okay. So this book is incredible. I absolutely loved it. 
It's about a Russian princess named Svetlana, and her and her mother and sister escape from Russia during the Bolshevik Revolution, um, I think uh, during World War I, I believe, in 1917. And they escape to Paris. This cover's gorgeous. You can see the Eiffel Tower back there. But they escape to Paris with, um, with their family jewels um, sewn into their corsets, and just the hardships they go through, um, nobody wants to help them. When they get to Paris, not even other Russians until she meets another Russian that does want to help, but possibly for the wrong reason. So, and then she ends up meeting a very kind doctor who helps her from an injury, and she has a hard time trusting anybody now, but she will learn to hopefully love again, and her icy heart will soon start to break. So... It's a really good historical fiction. I learned a lot from this um, about that era and what the Russians went through, and it was just really, really good. I highly enjoyed it. So definitely probably like very close to being top favorite. So let's go back and I will share with you my top, top favorite. Last but certainly not least is my favorite book of the year, which I do not have a copy of. I'm so sad. I ordered it from the library, and I'm still second in line, and I don't know why. <laughs> I tried so hard to get it on time for this video, but I had to get these videos up this week, so um, I will put it on the screen, but it is The Peasant's Dream by Melanie Dickerson, and this is the last and final book of her Hagenheim series, and every single book is just so wonderful, and you can read them separately. I absolutely love this series. I've read every single one of them. There's 11 books, I believe. I honestly wish she would write more. They're so good. But each one is about, um, I believe, um, the first book is about, I believe, like the father and mother, but it's different fairy tale retellings for each person in the family in Hagenheim. And so this one is a kind of a Cinderella twisted retelling. So Cinderella is actually a boy in town who is a woodcarver, and the prince is actually the duke's daughter. And it, it's got it's got everything. It's got romance. It's got um, action and adventure in it. And I literally, this was the first book this year that I ever gave a hug to multiple times, hugging this book and just like loving on it so much. I wish I had it to hold right now. But yeah, five out of five stars. Highly, highly recommend. Honestly, I don't know why most people don't know about her books. But if you love fairy tale retellings, she is like the queen of retellings. I love them so much. They are so, so good. Each one's different. Each one's fun. Honestly, this is probably my favorite in the series. It, yeah, 100% favorite. So it's so good. I absolutely love it. Um... They meet in town, and it's just super cute, super fun. And yeah, that is my favorite book of 2021. So I'm excited, and I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, because tomorrow is Christmas. Today, as you're watching this, is Christmas Eve, if you watch it. Or you can be busy, like this week was and is still insanely crazy and busy. <laughs> I hope I get everything done in time, because I have some other things I have to do. But I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all next week for some fun reading journal setups, as well as my um, most anticipated releases of January through March. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all in the next video.